Hello, I'm Jim Cameron, sales manager of Cameron Coca-Cola. We're very proud of the relationships we've developed in the entire Tri-State, and we're equally excited about the new relationships in the Pittsburgh market. Cameron Coca-Cola is proud to join the Pittsburgh Spirit organization in bringing you the 1984 Pittsburgh Spirit highlight film. And as you watch, and in whatever you do, just remember, Coke is it. It was supposed to be a year of promise for the Pittsburgh Spirit, who are trying to rebound from the disappointment of a 24 and 24 season. Armed with several new acquisitions, the Spirit sailed in troubled waters early. Despite a winning record of three and two, the team could have easily been five and oh. But it was in game six that the bottom fell out of the Spirit boat. Leading five to one with less than 12 minutes remaining, the Spirit should have had their fourth win. Instead, this Mark Fredrickson goal at 9.21 in overtime made the Spirit talk about potential changes. We'd worked very hard to bring good talent to the city of Pittsburgh, but still at this stage of the season, we knew that something was missing. That killer instinct, the eye of the tiger. The person who had that killer instinct was Stan Terlecki, the great superstar who established all kinds of spirit records. Stan and other great individual talents were not signed by the spirit as the team tried to put together a total team concept. Management had confidence in the new setup and were convinced that it would work. Despite the early struggles, head coach John Kowalski never lost confidence in the players. When we lost the game in overtime to Kansas City, and we were three and three at the time, I always felt that we had the right combination of players, but we needed a little more time to gel together. And I never lost my confidence in the players and in the team. That confidence in the team was rewarded, and that eye of the tiger, lacking in the early going, was to become a spirit trademark. In a word, the spirit became awesome. They finished with the second best record in the major indoor soccer league with a mark of 32 and 16. The 32 wins broke the old team record of 31. Win number 32 came in Memphis on the final night of the regular season. It was a milestone win for head coach John Kowalski, who recorded his 100th career victory. Along the way to a record-breaking year, Pittsburgh had a winning road record of 13 and 11. While at home at the Civic Arena, they were almost unbeatable, losing just five times in 24 games. It was a well-balanced team. Offensively, 15 players on the roster were in double figures in the point column, with five players registering 30 or more goals. Defensively, the club ranked third in the league. Peter Mavlik's goals against average of 4.07 was the third best figure among goalkeepers. While American Joe Papaleo, the team's top draft choice in 1982, logged a 4.12 mark that was fourth best in the league. They played as a team, but there was plenty of individual talent on this great spirit club in all shapes and sizes. The smallest player proved to be the most effective. 
At 5'5", five, five, Ian Sibbies was not big, except on the statistics page. Despite taking a physical beating, Ian always came back for more. His 35 goals and 27 assists and overall play resulted in his being named by his teammates as the spirit most valuable player. Sibbies led the team with seven game-winning goals and had an amazing 17-game scoring streak, one shy of the team record set by Graham Fife. Then there was Z Kapka. The Big Z had a great campaign, leading the spirit in assists and total points. In all, Kapka netted 30 goals and 36 assists for 66 points. This goal coming off of a volley versus Wichita was one of the more spectacular goals all season. After a short adjustment period, Kapka more than held his own among the league's premier forwards. On the defensive side, the country of Poland made another contribution in the form of Peter Mawlik. The veteran keeper steadily improved throughout the year, guiding the spirit to many important wins. A six-game winning streak, a 12-3 home field record, and an overall 16-7 mark were among his many accomplishments. Of all the Spirit newcomers, perhaps the most colorful performer was 22-year-old Dave Hagen. Typical of the other newcomers, Dave's play indoors was sluggish at first, since he had basically been an outdoor player. But once this aggressive forward got going, there was no stopping him. Davey picked up 35 goals and 22 assists for 57 points, knocking in four game winners and five power play goals along the way. Also impressive was Hagen's 25 blocked shots, high among spirit forwards. Dave Hagen became a solid player in his first season, but more importantly, could become a player to be heard from for many years to come. Of all the newcomers, no one was more popular than Drago Dembovic. The clever Yugoslavian was a threat to score every time he touched the ball. In all, Drago had 32 goals and nine assists for 41 points. Four times he scored hat tricks, and in two different games with Memphis, he scored five goals and one assist each game. When he came on the field, the crowd would frequently chant his name and applaud. players came from different countries to help convert the spirit into a contender. But the spirit hierarchy brought in other players from the MISL, North American Soccer League, and Collegiate Soccer to fulfill their game plan. From the Cleveland Force came midfielder Luis Alberto, who had been an MISL All-Star three times previously. Injuries limited Luis to just 30 games, but his experience with three championship teams was a help to his new spirit mates. From the Chicago Sting came the versatile Bob Vossmeyer. While starting out as a defender, Bobby ended up as a midfielder and aligned with Paul Child and Dave Hagen. Despite injuries that saw him miss 12 games, Vossmeyer still netted 10 goals and 15 assists for 25 points. The crafty player tied with team captain John O'Hara for the team lead in blocked shots with 79. From the powerful Cosmos came Erhard Kapp. Coming to the team on December 13th, 
Earhart settled in with his new teammates playing in 30 games. Earhart scored four goals for the Spirit, two of which were game winners while adding some muscle and hard tackling skills to the team. From the college ranks came Kevin Marr, the Yale University defender settled in as a regular on the back line, often drawing the assignment of marking the opposition's top scorer. Marr blocked 41 shots and route to being named the MISL's Rookie of the Year. Offensively, Kevin added six goals, including this one versus St. Louis on February 19th in a televised game. This was the only shorthanded goal the Spirit scored this past season. He was one of the young Americans in the MISL. Along with impressive newcomers, the Spirit were bolstered by the steady play of their key veterans. Team captain John O'Hara, again led by example. The four-year veteran netted six goals and 12 assists, and for the fourth consecutive year, was named to the MISL All-Star Team. Another All-Star performance came from Dave McKenzie. Max set personal career highs with 15 goals, 21 assists, and 36 points. He became the club's all-time assist leader with 84. The goal-scoring leader for the Spirit was dependable Paul Child. Always hustling, Child picked up 41 goals, 9 on the power play, while adding 23 assists for 64 points. A Pete Rose type of player, Paul Child's style of play makes him a fan favorite. His enthusiasm for the game and the Spirit fans is evidenced by his standard celebration of a goal. Enjoying his finest year with his spirit was midfielder Greg Ostalchik, a classy playmaker who set up 15 goals. Greg also scored 15, two of which were game winners for the spirit. Injuries plagued Greg in his first two seasons, but last year was a healthy one as Greg missed just two games. Playing in his first full season, Joe Papaleo played like a veteran winning 16 games and 24 decisions. Despite his youth, Papaleo played with poise in key games in front of big crowds. He clearly established himself as one of the league's finest keepers. In his second indoor season, Adam Topolsky and his speared right foot connected for 13 goals and 18 assists from his position on the spirit defense. Marcio Leite had another great finish for the Spirit. Playing in 22 games, Marcio notched 10 goals and 9 assists. Five of his goals came on the Spirit power play. Veteran Stevie Buttle netted 11 goals and 10 assists. Including this feed to Paul Child, which beat Cleveland in sudden death overtime. Bench strength is important to any club, and the depth on the Spirit roster was another team's strong point. George Tiger. Paul Toomey. Keith Tozer. Rick Schweitzer were key contributors when called upon. Another big contributor was former player, now assistant coach Mickey Kay. And the record-breaking season wasn't just limited to on-the-field activities. It was a record-breaking year in the stands as well. The play on the field, coupled with aggressive marketing, a strong group sales campaign, and continued community involvement led to a tremendous rise in attendance. The love affair had begun.
More than 200,000 people came to watch the Spirit play. Average attendance was over 8,000, up 53% from the previous year. Over the last 14 regular season games, the team averaged better than 10,000 fans per game. Indoor soccer was catching on as the team became Pittsburgh's hottest entertainment attraction. They became the hottest ticket in town. Spirit fans celebrated all year at the Civic Arena, and the players joined in the celebration. A night with the spirit is more than just a game. It's a happening. On a given night, there are promotions to attract kids and families. Premium items like soccer balls and t-shirts are given away. There's a season-long youth soccer tournament, halftime activities, and groups of people out for a good time. There's more excitement in the form of the chili goal. Fans are rewarded with a free bowl of chili from a spirit sponsor when the spirit scores seven or more goals in a game. And the club slogan, Hot Legs, drew even more exposure when the finals of the Miss Hot Legs contest were held at halftime of a spirit game. Many people were impressed with the caliber of the league, which continues to get better. League attendance reached an all-time high, and the future looks even brighter thanks to key rivalries that began to develop. In the rivalry category, Pittsburgh versus Cleveland became the rivalry in the MISL. The two teams played it rough, exciting, and close. In six regular season games, the two clubs split them. Each team won once in their opponent's building. The two teams matched up so well that four of their games went into sudden death overtime, and one game went into a shootout. Pittsburgh fans would cheer the spirit on in Cleveland, and by the same token, no Pittsburgh-Cleveland game at the arena would be without force fans from Cleveland. So bring on Cleveland in the playoffs. Cleveland beat Pittsburgh 6-4 in game one. But in game two, the spirit came back. Paul Child scored twice in leading the spirit to a 4-1 victory to even the series. Game three saw the series shift to Richfield, Ohio, where the force quickly took a three to nothing lead. But a spirit comeback tied the score at three apiece. Alex Tarnosi's overtime goal won it for Cleveland six to five. But this Paul Child apparent goal scored earlier in the game but disallowed because of a foul added some controversy to post-game conversations. The force now needed one more win to knock the spirit from the playoffs. Despite having their backs to the wall, the Spirit never quit. Near misses by several Spirit players were unlucky breaks for a Pittsburgh team who bowed to Cleveland 5-3. But in spite of the early exit in the playoffs, it was a banner year for the Spirit. A year where the positives far outweighed the negatives. A year of recognition for the team who became accepted and loved in the Steel City. There's a future now for indoor soccer. A future that hopefully will bring to Pittsburgh a major indoor soccer league championship. The love affair is just beginning.